Evaluate the expressions answering degrees and radians. Notice all the expressions involve the inverse secant function or arc secant function. For review, has a domain or input of x less than or equal to negative one or x greater than or equal to positive one, which are all the possible secant function values. And the range or output is y greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to pi, where y can't equal pi divided by two radians which means in standard position, the output or range, again, is from zero to pi radians, where y cannot equal pi divided by two radians, and therefore the output will always be in this interval here, where this open point indicates y cannot equal pi divided by two. The first expression is inverse secant of positive one. This is equal to the angle in this interval that has a secant function value of positive one. On the unit circle, secant theta is equal to one over x. So while we could look for the x coordinate on the unit circle where the reciprocal is equal to one, we often rewrite inverse secant as inverse cosine since secant function values and cosine function values are reciprocals of one another. In this case, though the reciprocal of one or one over one is still equal to one, and therefore we can rewrite inverse secant of one as inverse cosine of one. Again, this is because if we take the secant function value of one and make it a fraction, and then take the reciprocal, again, we still get one over one, which is equal to one. Now that we have inverse cosine of one, we now need to find the cosine function value of positive one on the unit circle. On the unit circle, cosine theta is equal to x. So we look for the point on the unit circle in this interval where the x coordinate is positive one, which is this point here which means the terminal side of the angle we are looking for must intersect the unit circle at this point. And this is also the initial side of the angle in standard position. And therefore the angle we are looking for is zero degrees or zero radians. So this is equal to zero degrees or zero radians because this angle is in the output or range of inverse secant as well as inverse cosine. And it gives a cosine function value of positive one as well as a secant function value of positive one. Next, we have inverse secant of negative two square root of three divided by three. Let's rewrite this using inverse cosine, but determining the reciprocal of this secant function value. So we know the secant function value is negative two square root of three divided by three. So if we take the reciprocal, we can find the cosine function value, and therefore the cosine function value is three divided by negative two square root three. In order to recognize the cosine function value though, we need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of three. We can see the fraction is going to be negative. We have negative three square root three over two times, this product is three, two times three is six. Simplifying, there's one three and three, and two threes and six. This simplifies to negative square root three divided by two, which means inverse secant of negative two square root three divided by three is equal to inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two. And now we look for the point on the unit circle in this interval where the x coordinate is negative square root three divided by two, which is this point here which means the terminal side is this ray. We know the initial side is this ray, and therefore the angle we are looking for is this angle here, which is 150 degrees, or in radians, 5 6 pi radians. Next we have inverse secant of negative square root two, which means we're looking for an angle in this interval that has a secant function value of negative square root two over one. Let's rewrite this as inverse cosine. The cosine function value is a reciprocal of this function value, which is equal to one over negative square root two. Let's rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of two. We can see the value is going to be negative. So we have negative, this is square root two, over square root two times square root two is two. Inverse secant of negative square root two 
is equal to inverse cosine of negative square root two divided by two. We can evaluate inverse cosine of negative square root two divided by two by determining the point on the unit circle in this interval that has an x-coordinate of negative square root two divided by two, which is this point here. And therefore, this is the terminal side of the angle. This is the initial side. And the angle we are looking for is this angle, which is 135 degrees or three-fourths pi radians. And then finally we have inverse secant of two. Let's rewrite this as inverse cosine. If the secant function value is two or two over one, then the cosine function value is the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of two over one is one half. And therefore inverse secant of two is equal to inverse cosine of one half. So we look for the point of the unit circle in this interval where the x coordinate is positive one half, which is this point. And therefore the terminal side is here, the initial side is here, and our angle is 60 degrees, or in radians, pi over three radians, or one third pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.